so welcome everybody for this session on nasal cavity yeah now normally uh, we think this is the nose many people have bad habit of putting their finger in their nose and uh, this is what nasal cavity is but no nasal cavity is far more larger than what a dirty human finger explores and so that people who have this bad habit of digging their nose uh don't go too deep god has made arrangement of conche in the lateral wall of the nose so this is the hard palate this is the soft palate this is the external nasal cavity or external nasal openings and back here this are the internal nasal openings internal nasal openings between the external nasal opening and the internal nasal opening is the nasal cavity now you are looking at the lateral wall when we look at the same in a coronal section in a coronal section there is a nasal septum like this and then this is the lateral nasal wall and this lateral nasal wall has the concha superior middle and inferior concha okay beyond this concha are sinuses like maxillary sinus this huge thing what i have drawn is maxillary air sinus above here is frontal air sinus the two frontal air these are ethmoidal air sinus so there are pneumatic bones in the body and these pneumatic bones you must have studied the classification of bones and these pneumatic bones are the ones which have a air cavity a air sinus in them what is the function of this air sinus they make the skull light all of us experience that uh, whenever we get common cold sinusitis the skull becomes heavy so that would have happened normally if this bone would have been full of bone substance so they make the skull light they add resonance to the voice they do the conditioning of air entering the body conditioning of air entering the body so with this background there are four pneumatic bones in the body i have drawn here frontal ethmoidal there are three ethmoidal sinuses maxillary and sphenoid okay so frontal bone maxillary bone a uh, sphenoid and ethmoid these are the four these are the four pneumatic bones they have air cavity now let us start with the uh, nasal septum which exactly lies in the center okay nasal septum what we see here is columna in our uh, columella which is exactly when we look at the our our nose nasal openings uh, this is the columna in the center and this we call as the external nares and these are the two nasal openings when we look our at our nose from the lower side we see the two external nasal openings and columella in between huh? columella in between now when we look in a sagittal section when we look at a sagittal section the
Now this is the hard pellet. So let us see which bones make up the nasal septum. This major bone which makes up the nasal septum is vomer. And another bone which makes up the major part of the nasal septum is this. Is perpendicular plate of ethmoid perpendicular plate of ethmoid so these two bones are the major components normally the nasal septum is made up of bones it is made up of cartilages and it is made up of skin. These three components make up the nasal septum. Now I'm currently talking about the bones. Bones, vomer, perpendicular plate of ethmoid. And then there is rostrum of sphenoid. These are small, small components. Rostrum of sphenoid. Then there is the nasal spine of the frontal bone nasal spine of the frontal bone then there is nasal crest of the nasal bone nasal crest of the nasal bone of the nasal bone. now coming to the cartilages this is the septal cartilage. Septal cartilage. And then there is a septal process. Septal process of inferior nasal cartilage. This inferior nasal cartilage is actually on the lateral side. Okay, but its septal process is here, and the skin component is here, which is called as columna, columella. Okay, columna. So lower part, and we can see the skin component exactly in the center of the two external layers. We can see this columella, the skin component. Now, normally we may feel that these cartilages are elastic cartilage because we can move the nose, but it is not the fact. The, these cartilages are high line cartilages and because they are pieces of cartilage, we can move it. So again, I will repeat. The nasal septum, which lies in the midline is made up of bones, cartilages, skin. Amongst bones, vomer and perpendicular plate of ethmoid. And there are small contribution from rostrum of sphenoid, nasal spine of the frontal bone, nasal crest of the nasal bone, cartilages, septal cartilage, septal process of inferior nasal cartilage, and columella. Now comes a little complicated part. And that is the blood supply and now supply. Uh, the current books are almost giving four, four arteries, but I'm, I'm sticking to the previous version of the textbooks, which, so this is the nasal septum and there are only two parts, anterior superior part and posterior inferior part. In the anterior superior part, there is anterior ethmoidal artery anterior ethmoidal artery and here so this is the dividing line 
this is just a dividing line so anterior superior posterior inferior anterior ethmoidal artery and here it is spino palatine artery okay spino palatine artery sir sure. sure. yes sir can you please give the orientation of this diagram so this this is uh the nasal septum exactly in midline and this is the anterior part this is the superior part this is the inferior part and this is the posterior part okay so we have just divided for sake of blood supply for the sake of blood supply we have divided it into anterior superior and posterior inferior part so same nasal septum will be divided into this is anterior superior and posterior inferior part so anterior superior part will be septal area the septum in the region of septal cartilage and perpendicular plate of ethmoid and this will be in the region of vomer so this upper part will be supplied by anterior ethmoidal artery lower part is supplied by spino uh, palatine artery <laughs> and the facial artery gives superior labial artery and from this superior labial artery comes the superior labial artery comes a branch <clears throat> of going to the septum which is called as septal branch <coughs> which is called septal branch hmm? septal branch now this area where uh, all of this <coughs> arteries are coming together is called as littles area another name for which is kisselbeck's plexus kisselbeck's area so it is highly vascular because the anterior ethmoidal the spino palatine and the septal branch of the superior labial artery all of them give their branches in this little area and it is highly vascular so sometimes while putting the finger in the nose one may touch it and so it may bleed also so so no need to be scared it is very highly vascular area okay very susceptible for bleeding common side of course bleeding from the nose all of us know is called as epistaxis huh? is called as epitaxis epistaxis other causes of bleeding may be hypertension uh, increased heat now i am going to talk about the nerve supply the nerve supply nerve supply and this diagram i am going to show the nerve supply so here there is a nerve called as internal nasal branch of anterior ethmoidal nerve so it was anterior ethmoidal artery here here it is internal nasal branch of anterior ethmoidal nerve and here there is another nerve called as naso naso palatine nerve so it was spino palatine artery here and it is naso palatine nerve and there is there are few nerves here okay few nerves here at the at the roof of the nose and they are not giving supply to the septum but these are the olfactory nerves these are the olfactory nerves which are piercing the roof and going to the olfactory bulb which is located in the skull okay so that this is the cribriform plate of ethmoid these olfactory nerves are piercing so whenever you write the nerve supply we write internal nasal branch of anterior ethmoidal nerve we write naso palatine nerve and we talk about olfactory nerve olfactory nerve okay so these are the this is the nasal septum this is the arterial supply of the nasal septum 
anterior ethmoidal spinopalatine mm, this is the nerve supply of the nasal septum anterior superior part by the internal nasal branch of anterior ethmoidal artery nasopalatine nerve and olfactory nerve okay i'll just talk about applied most of the people the nasal septum is not straight okay so what i had drawn it is not like this it can be deviated so it can be deviating deviated and it can hit the lateral wall it can block it can block the openings of the sinuses and cause sinusitis and this is called as dns deviated nasal septum deviated nasal septum okay <clears throat> it can be due to arched palate so when the palate is arched the instead of being straight so the nasal septum gets less space so it gets deviated many reasons you will study it in when you go for your ent postings now the second topic of for today is the lateral nasal wall lateral nasal wall lateral nasal wall is slightly complicated compared to the lateral nasal wall is slightly complicated compared to the nasal septum It's many many bones many many bones they uh, contribute to the nat the, the lateral nasal septum so let us start drawing what are the bones which contribute so frontal bone coming from the top which has frontal sinus contributes then here on the nose is the nasal bone nasal bone now next next to the nasal bone is the frontal process of maxilla okay frontal process so this is frontal process of maxilla frontal process of maxilla okay. then here is the lacrimal bone so this is frontal bone and here is lacrimal now next to lacrimal bone is ethmoid so draw frontal lacrimal ethmoid ethmoid always has to be drawn like this because these two things of the ethmoid are nothing but superior nasal concha and middle nasal concha and inferior nasal concha inferior nasal concha is a separate bone so inferior nasal concha is a separate bone so this is inferior nasal concha so this is superior concha middle concha in the part of ethmoid now in this region in this region now this is the hard palate grossly in this region we see two more plates we see two more plates and one of them is the perpendicular plate perpendicular plate of palatine bone perpendicular plate of palatine bone and other is the medial pterygoid plate
so if god gives you a choice that i can ask questions on nasal cavity you should ask that god please let the nasal septum be asked because by now you must have realized it is very difficult to draw the and there is last one which is sphenoid which also has a air cavity sphenoid so in the lateral nasal wall you start drawing nasal frontal first the lacrimal ethmoid inferior nasal concha perpendicular plate of palatine medial pterygoid sphenoid so these are the bones which make up the lateral nasal wall now again i would like to show you how to draw this okay very fast so draw the nose like this draw the hard palate like this okay draw the frontal bone show the air cavity draw the nasal bone after nasal bone draw the maxillary process then draw the lacrimal okay so frontal nasal lacrimal maxillary now you have to draw one below other ethmoid inferior nasal concha when you draw the inferior nasal concha draw these two plates here perpendicular plate of ethmoid and pterygoid and here comes the sphenoid so ethmoid inferior nasal concha perpendicular plate of palatine and medial pterygoid plate okay you will have to practice this again and again again i will show you frontal nasal so frontal nasal lacrimal ethmoid inferior nasal concha slightly like this two plates perpendicular plate of palatine perpendicular the medial pterygoid plate sphenoid maxilla okay so now coming to the last part like the nerve supply and the blood supply of the septum now we will talk about the blood supply and the nerve supply of the lateral nasal wall and after that we will be speaking about this is the bones bony structure looks like this but grossly it covered with skin of course yeah uh, i didn't add uh, in the process of showing this bone i would also like to tell you that here there is superior nasal cartilage and then there is inferior nasal cartilage okay so this is superior nasal cartilage inferior nasal cartilage which gave a septal process right and then there are some lr cartilages over here and this is the skin component so again here also there is cartilage here also there is cartilage uh, bones cartilage and skin bones cartilage and skin now let us talk about the four areas and the arteries so like there were only two areas when we drew the nasal septum but here we talk about four areas again the name almost remains same this is anterior ethmoidal arch anterior ethmoidal arch so this is anterior superior form this is post superior this is anterior inferior part and this is posterior inferior part in the nasal septum we had drawn in the nasal septum we had drawn only uh 
two parts anterior superior posterior inferior okay but now what we are uh, drawing here is four parts anterior superior posterior superior anterior inferior and posterior inferior again the second artery name also fortunately remains same the the spino palatine artery but now here comes another artery and that artery is greater palatine artery so this artery which supplies the posterior inferior and and anterior inferior part is greater palatine artery and also there are branches from the facial artery branches from the facial artery so anterior ethmoidal spino palatine greater palatine and branches from the facial artery now let us see the nerve supply of these four quadrants the nerve supply of these four quadrants anterior ethmoidal nerve now we had nasopalatine nerve in case of the septum but here there is a nerve posterior superior lateral nasal posterior superior lateral nasal like the greater palatine artery there is there is anterior palatine nerve so anterior ethmoidal nerve posterior superior lateral nasal nerve and here there is a nerve and the name is anterior superior alveolar nerve so draw four quadrants anterior ethmoidal nerve in the anterior superior quadrant in the posterior superior quadrant is posterior superior lateral nasal in the posterior inferior quadrant is anterior palatine nerve and in the anterior inferior quadrant is anterior superior alveolar okay so now gross leaf how does this look so whenever we take a cross section sagittal section and of uh, the head and then look at the lateral part after removing the septum it doesn't look so complicated as we saw instead what we see is we just see a superior concha spelling appears like concha huh? superior concha and here is the sphenoidal sinus then middle concha and then inferior concha okay in the middle concha there is a moon like curve half moon like structure which is called as hiatus semilunaris hiatus semi lunaris opening in the hiatus semi lunaris is the frontal air sinus anterior ethmoidal air sinus and the maxillary air sinus axillary air sinus so frontal sinus is here but it opens here that's how sometimes people feel that how come so much uh, sp uh, the sputum and mucus is coming out but then this whole frontal sinus is full so whenever people blow their nose it comes out from here 
here there is an elevation called as Bula ethmoidalis, and on that elevation op opens the middle ethmoidal sinus. That means the middle meatus, middle ethmoidal sinus. Middle meatus is, has openings of four sinuses frontal, maxillary, anterior ethmoidal, middle ethmoidal. Now, what is remaining is the posterior ethmoidal, which opens in the superior meatus. So, below superior concha is a space called superior meatus. Below middle concha is a space called middle meatus. Below the inferior concha is a space called inferior meatus, where opens the nasolacrimal duct. And that's how in this nasolacrimal duct, Sometimes when we put the eye drops in our eyes, it, it comes out through this nasolacrimal uh, duct and then it goes to the pharynx and we feel the eye drops in the throat. Normally, whatever tears are being washed, they come here and from here they evaporate. So whenever there is excess tears, that is crying, this comes over here and then comes out of the nose and that's why whenever we cry, people do this <laughs> because excess or what uh, tears are coming out. Otherwise, normally they get evaporated. Above the superior concha is a meatus called as supreme meatus, also called as the spinoidal recess, where the spinoidal air sinus opens. Supreme meatus, where the spinoidal air sinus opens. So spinoidal air sinus in the supreme meatus, Posterior ethmoidal in the superior meatus, anterior ethmoidal, uh, frontal, maxillary, middle ethmoidal in the middle meatus, nasolacrimal duct in the inferior meatus. Okay. This space here is called as the atrium. Okay. Uh, and the space here is the vestibule. So this is how grossly the lateral nasal wall looks like without uh, when it is covered with mucous membrane. When the mucous membrane is removed, we can see those bones what we had drawn. Okay. So whenever, so in the applied anatomy, whenever there is a deviated nasal septum, this deviated nasal septum, you know, blocks these openings of the sinuses. So sinuses are not drained. So the secretions get pointed up in the sinuses and this causes sinusitis. Okay. Maxillary air sinus is below the orbits. Frontal air sinus is above the orbits. And ethmoidal air sinus is between the orbits. And spinoidal air sinus is beyond, posterior to the orbits. Okay. So all this... Uh, are where the look locations are very crucial and very common uh, disease sinusitis if you want to avoid this sinusitis doing regularly breathing exercises like pranayama and all helps you thank you so much for this uh, uh, for your patient